Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great week so far. And can you believe it is the last day of August already? I hope you've had a fabulous summer. We're really excited that the kids are going back to school next week. So we're going to get into a nice routine with that again. And let me know what you've been up to. So today in Sweet Ramblings, I'm going to be chatting with Libby from Trilogy Bakehouse. Really excited to find out more about her as she is also an expat as well. Good morning to everyone. Everyone that's joining us nice to see you all so I'm gonna go ahead and add Libby to the chat while it connects there I hope you're all having a great week let me know what you've been up to since last week good morning, Hi, morning. How morning. Are you? <laughs> okay this is a little yes. out of my comfort zone but that's, that's, that's great. okay <laughs> it's okay just just your friends talking so you're all good <laughs> so how are you Good, good. My oldest went up to school. Uh, they've been back. This is the third day, fourth day, fourth day. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change because now we're down to two. Um, and then the middle one goes to preschool starting in a couple of weeks. So then we'll be down to one and we'll be back to how that used to feel. when it's so easy. It's one kid. Yes. <laughs> but, it's yeah. always been this time of year, isn't it? When everything starts to get back to some sort of normality and the kids are back to school and you just kind of feel that you have a little bit more time to breathe sometimes when you're I've never immense. had that since I've had any of them right so it's just the yeah. worst but hopefully they get to stay in and stay healthy and, and we'll see how it goes <laughs> she's loving yeah. it so far so that's good Oh, that's good. That's really good. So um, do you want to just introduce everyone? I've just explained that you're Libby from Trilogy Bakehouse, but how did you get into baking and tell us about your journey so far? Well, I did put this all into my application for the Great British Bake Off, which I did not get a call back from because COVID. I'm going to blame COVID for the, the lack of, of calling me back, but that's fine. Um, I really there wasn't like there's no formal training or anything you know you know like the typical kind of Brit I feel like my gram grandmother taught me a lot of you know how to make she's Scottish so scones obviously were like the number one thing um and then my mom has you know the classic like I told you Victoria sandwich that she um just that's her go-to every every birthday um so it was kind of always floating around it really wasn't until I I don't think I really got into it until I moved um, to the States. I lived in Canada before I moved here. That's where I went to film school. Um, and you know, you kind of, I like played around with recipes every now and again when I would see something online. Um, but nothing of any consequence. Um, and then it wasn't until I got, came here and then just started kind of doing cupcakes for people, um, for birthdays and, and whatnot. And then it just kind of, I, I ended up just making a separate Instagram for my baking stuff that wasn't called Trilogy Bakehouse until uh, like last year, um, just to kind of separate those photos from my, my main feed of my children, basically. Um, so just to kind of, for my own thing, just to kind of, that's where all my baking stuff is. And then it just became a thing, you know, one of my friends requested, um, her daughter has an, an egg allergy that's, that's pretty serious and it's hard to, to find, you know, bakeries in the area that, that accommodate that, um, especially with custom orders of cookies and things like that. So that's, I think she was probably one of my first sugar cookie orders so that was really a jump into the you know vegan stuff really was the safest option just to kind of just get rid of anything that might trigger um you know mm -hmm. any allergies um so yeah my like you know aquafaba royal icing was one of my first kind of forays into into sugar cookie decorating and then it just became like a thing that i was like hey a thing I need to do all the classes <laughs> i need to do all the things that's right all yeah. the flavors. <laughs> So, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because I think with a lot of us, like I've, so I went to, a, I did a couple of classes in the UK that got me into making sugar flowers and mm -hmm. modeling and working with fondant or sugar paste as we call it in the UK. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we were in Canada and we had kids that I really started to get into cookies because suddenly I had kids that I could make treats for to take to school. And then they would see the clips of all the cool shows on TV as well and, and yeah. would say, well, can you make that? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> right, sure, why not? And it, um, it's funny how we all just seem to naturally just fall into it. And then, like you say as well, with us coming from the UK, bacon's like, it's, it's a thing there. It's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah, people bake. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we all grow up knowing who Mary Berry is and mm -hmm. the Bake Off especially is, is changed baking so much over there so yeah. um you said you applied for it you obviously watch it as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah definitely it's hard over here because it's delayed by you know a few days so uh, you know the next the next one hasn't started yet right so whenever it dies it's always you know delayed by a couple of days so you have to stay off social media until you know who's out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd lo it's, I love it's it. fun to watch so have you ever tried to, to recreate any of the um, technical challenges that they do? Oh, yeah, for sure. And they and they do. They have the masterclasses on on um, Netflix as well now, so you can go back and they can kind of walk you through. Okay, this was what I would have done for the technical challenge, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I do like to do that. But you know, it adds up. <laughs> he was just, my husband literally has this running joke in the family where he just comes upstairs to the kitchen and he's like, "Oh, you're baking again." <laughs> yes, baking again. <laughs> Sorry, because he hates it. The swell leaves it like a mess because you know have the small sink and you know it's like it's easy. I mean, it's not easy, but if on the bake off, at least you have someone else to do the washing up for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, right? <laughs> right. Look, they've got a nice clean bowl. It's ready for them. They don't have to. I almost them. wish. I almost wish they would do a behind the scenes of what actually happens. Right. Yeah. Of all that the would special be so... that up. <laughs> it's got to be a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Of how long it takes, because I, I think if, if I could have a crew behind me cleaning up, right. I'd bake, I'd bake a lot more often. <laughs> I'm weighing out my ingredients for me and all of that stuff, yeah. I, I would bake. <laughs> yeah, they seem to weigh them out out of those little jars, but I feel like they've already pretty measured them. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> and I think a lot of the shows are kind of like that, that they make it look so easy, and that's why so many people then try baking, because... Oh, well, they see on a show you can make amazing cookies in 40 minutes. And the rest of us are sat there like, mm -mm, that's mm -hmm. not true. <laughs> How much editing is it? The nail is it? The, real, the real deal. <laughs> if you try and do yeah. cookies in 40 minutes, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where did the name Trilogy Bakehouse come from? Oh, it was a long time coming. I, I had been circling around ideas for a long time. Uh, and everyone was vetoed by my... Not really my husband, he was like, yeah, I don't, it doesn't like catch me or whatever. My brother is the, the picky one. So he was the one that I run everything by. He's like, no, no, no. And then I don't know what, I don't know why the, the, the word came to me one day. And I was like, you know, we have, we have three kids and that's it. We're done. Thank you. So I was like, okay, well, we'll just, let's just seal the deal on the children of this household by saying okay, <laughs> the trilogy there's three it's yeah kind of dedicated to them so yeah that's kind of where that came from um, i love that and i love the logo too so yeah um, and it's yeah. really nice because it's nice and simple and it's got still got a nice story behind it mm -hmm. so i like that you use bakehouse too and you haven't kind of put yourself as a cookie or a caker and you've right. kind of left it open that you can do anything yeah. so right is cakes the first problem. thing you started with uh cakes yeah probably uh cakes and then when i was here yeah cupcakes were like the main thing it really didn't start until i um i did a fundraiser for a local mom in the area she was you know in one of our local groups and she was supposed to have her her first child the same time as my as i was having my oldest and she had her at i think it was 28 weeks um so she kind of had got in touch with us all and said you know i'm i'm looks like you know we're gonna have this baby early and i'm freaking out and she was a single mom of already you know three uh kids and she was struggling and she was you know just wasn't she wasn't even asking she was just saying I'm, i don't know what i'm gonna do you know i'm gonna about to go in the hospital you know with a 28 week old baby and emergency everything and how am i gonna pay my rent and all this stuff so it was one of those things where it was just you know people were just kind of saying oh well thinking of you good luck and i was just like okay well what can we actually do to help here mm -hmm. so i just did like a cupcake fundraiser and I just I literally had my had my kid I think yeah I had my kid and then I and then I I don't know I just baked like 40 dozen cupcakes or something because people <laughs> just like oh and then oh and they got a little bit over my head and I was like, okay um but um that's really kind of where it kicked off because then people was you know came up to me afterwards or emailed me afterwards and just said hey they were really nice. Can I have more? So that's kind of why I just thought, okay, well, maybe I can do something on the side with this. Um, yeah. And then do like, you... the, the cookies and stuff evolved after that. 
Yeah. Do you find that, because this is something I've noticed, I'm, I never intended to do, but I go back now and I start, I've started almost sort of trying to bake more traditional British things, mm-hmm. which I find is, is quite strange. <laughs> and I guess because I've lived here for 12 years now and there's a lot of very traditional things that you obviously, we obviously can't buy here. So I make Welsh cakes mm-hmm. and that I've made before. Um, all sorts of things. Bakewell tart. Have you have you gone down that route of trying to make traditional things as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I introduced my yeah American family to banoffee pie. They've never had that before. <laughs> um, but definitely, yeah, I go. You know, try and make. I, honestly, the one thing I'm not one thing. I'm sure I've like failed at a lot of things, but the one thing I consistently fail at is crumpets. And I don't know. I mean, I, I've done Paul Hollywood's recipe. I've done all kinds of things, but I just cannot get them right you know I can't get them like I can get them at home so yeah it's my one annoying thing so I'm still working on that one um but yeah English muffins and um all of the yeah Welsh cakes like you said like that's a nice kind of home comfort because I did grow up in South Wales for the most part so um so yeah there are things that I miss that are hard to get hold of and obviously I like to bake bread when I have the time to because a lot of the bread here unless you buy like the good quality expensive stuff it has an awful lot of sugar in it compared to what we're used to mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. it's just that's still a, an adjustment that i'm not you know really used to so yeah. i still complain sometimes with the you say the differences with the making crumpets so mm-hmm. i've noticed up here especially the flour is very different mm-hmm. and then sugar is different too and i think that does affect bake so i I've never quite been able to get that really nice, fluffy Victoria sponge mm. that I would be used to in the UK because it's just it's just different, I think. Yeah. And you have to find yeah. other ways of replicating it. But um, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uses, um, sorry, I was going to say my mum always uses self-raising flour and that, even that's quite hard to come by. You know, you only got to search for it. It's like one bag in the whole shop. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and there are ways that you can make your own. But even then I find it's not the same it really isn't the same no so you mentioned paul hollywood are you a fan of his (laughs) you can't turn away old blue eyes he is just so good at what he does and you know i i just think that you just it's one of those people that just knows their stuff you ask he does um, absolutely i think he's somebody that would be amazing to sit down and talk to for half an hour and just let him talk about everything because he's so knowledgeable about bread every time they do bread week and I because bread has never been something I'm that good at but he's amazing the right. different tips that he gives them and right. yeah it, he like instinctively yeah. knows like the cutoff time for proving in other way you know you go over this and it's gonna sink like it's just he knows the chemistry and it's really intriguing it's amazing yeah yeah yeah. And especially when everyone always goes to that golden handshake they want from him every week. <laughs> That's the goal. Nobody cares if they win the it is, absolutely. The they just want a handshake from Paul, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts on, um, I'll ask you uh, one of the quick fire questions I was going to ask you. I'll ask you it now though, because we're talking about the Bake Off. Okay. Do you pref- did you prefer Mary Berry or Prue Lee? I preferred Mary. I mean, I love her, but but Mary is just, she was just so funny. I don't know. She just reminds me of so many people in my life, like mixed up into one person. And it, I just loved her personality. So that was that was a hard one. And, you know, obviously the, the presenter change was hard for me too, because, you know, it had been, it felt like it was, you know, so long, so many years that it was just the same people. So, yeah, mm-hmm. but, you know, that's television politics right like bbc I, and all I, that stuff i think with mary berry as well if you mention british bacon that's the person everyone thinks of isn't it that she is she is the face of bacon and she, one of the first bacon books i remember reading was one of hers so mm-hmm. she's she's done it a long long time yeah, and she knows her stuff. Does. she is amazing yeah we have an awful lot of bakers that are and chefs and everybody in the UK that are just people that I admire that have just honed their craft. Um, that's really inspiring. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think that came up in in um, the chat I had with my friend from Wales that 
we're almost kind of take it for granted when you live there that you've got this immediate sort of contact that you can have with people in the industry mm -hmm. and it's it's so much easier I guess because it's a smaller country too it's just easier to have yeah. that connection with people and get the supplies that you need and mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a lot easier there and um, what other things do you miss about the UK I honestly I miss the summers and I know that it's a lot of rain but it's also a lot of rain where I am it's just really it's just rain but it's 90 degrees so mm -hmm. it's yeah I miss this the, the weather which sounds crazy because I remember um you know just telling people even when I moved to well when I moved to Canada I was in Vancouver so the weather was actually very comparable to the UK um but even here you know, I'd feel like I'd tell people, you know, if, it's, if there's a blue sky in, in the UK, it's a talking point. You know, it's like, oh, blue sky. Like, that just doesn't happen. It's yeah, it's sure like, on. <laughs> cloudy and it's whatever. But if, when, when it's nice, it's really nice. And it's not humid. Like, I have a hard time with the humidity down here. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, Washington, D.C. area is a very swampy area. So it is very muggy. Um, and it just, I don't want to be outside. And that, that is really sad because the bugs and the and the humidity is is a hard thing to, to get through but um you know i miss my friends and family obviously I miss healthcare <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you know covid aside i miss being able to like travel very easily um yeah europe is so easy and and, it, and up until now i haven't you know been back in a while and i haven't seen what the prices are like but generally speaking it was very affordable to just fly to Europe. I remember buying my parents, you know, an anniversary gift or something. And I just drove them to the airport and I bought them a plane ticket each and a hotel room in, in France. And it was just, I was like, I don't know, 18 or something at the time, but I could afford that because it was, the, they just, it's very, make it very accessible. Um, it's true. So really, it's so true. Here it's just so expensive. Yeah. That, that's one of the things we used to travel quite a lot because mm -hmm. in the UK we, if you work a regular job you get a lot more vacation time too so it's much much easier to like you say just hop on a plane mm -hmm. hop over to europe it's like right. an hour or two hours <laughs> in, the, in the flight yes. and um yeah that that's something we miss is the traveling we used to go to cyprus quite a lot and to menorca mm -hmm. um you can't just do that it's not as no. easy from canada even so yeah. everything is so much further and much more expensive yeah that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just had a quick question. Will this be recorded? Yes, it will. Um, the replays always go on to my Instagram, usually within about five minutes of us finishing the lives. That's just that it gives it time to process, but it, it will be here for later. So, so as you've transitioned into cookies now, um, what are the, I, I've taken a look at your account again this morning. You've got quite a, a lot of different styles going on. You've done some painting recently. Yeah. What is your favorite thing to do with cookie decorating? The painting, for sure. That started with the with the cookies challenge from Nicole, mm -hmm. um, uh, Sweet Vibes Bakery, and I just in fact I have him right here. This was the trigger. This this guy was the trigger, and Amazing. I had such a good time painting in this class. That if you haven't done this class before, get on it. Like it life-changing um so yeah i once i did that and i was like oh my god i can do this you know you have the right tools like i, I went afterwards i went on amazon and i bought really really fine tipped uh paint brushes so i could do the fine detail um and then i just i put them all on my bed here for like just to fall back. <laughs> but i just i surrounded in them i don't know what to, i mean i do know what to do with them i want to um you know put epoxy resin all of them and like display them but right now they're just mm -hmm. kind of piling up because I can't stop myself just <laughs> painting cookies for no apparent reason. Um, I do have an order coming up of um, about half a dozen uh, Magnum PI cookies. So that's going to be Oh, nice. That's cool. <laughs> so I'll get to, but that's the, that's a tricky one is, is doing multiples of the same one. Um, what my, one of my first, yeah. the first order I had of the painted ones was the Ben Franklin ones that I have one of because I did it like a test before I made them. And it's just like you put one shadow in the cat, like slightly different place and it just looks not quite exactly the same so it's it's uh a little frustrating when you're a little bit of a, of a perfectionist but um but i love the challenge um, I just love the had you painted much beforehand before you did nicole's class um 
not on cookies, but I mean, and, and actually not really like just on on canvas or anything either. But I did go. So my like education, um, kind of tra trajectory was I went to drama school after after um school. So that was my university. I, I went and did um technical and production arts. So it was all like backstage theater stuff. So I ended up kind of specializing in um scenic art and prop making so i did do painting with scenic art and i did do painting with prop making um and then i mm. uh, we had a production of beauty and the beast and we needed a prosthetic for one of the, for that performance um and so i was like i'll do it um so that was my first time kind of working with prosthetics and kind of getting skin tone correct and and painting on on silicone so that was really really cool and that kind of pushed me over into going to film school for um makeup design for film and tv so Again, that was very kind of art driven. You know, my husband just said to me the other day, he's like, this is, you're basically doing your other job, but on a cookie, you know, you're just, you're just doing makeup, but it's on a flat surface instead of. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, I mean, color matching was always one of my strong points at school and kind of sculpting and things like that was, was definitely something that I was um, into. So I think all of that kind of helped me get to the point where this like works out it looks nice <laughs> I'm proud what, of is your of favorite, it, so. what is your favorite thing to paint and is it is it faces or scenes I think, or? I think it's faces yeah I think the portrait cookies are, are just mm -hmm. like I don't know what I love to do and I've got a couple here of like celebrities and stuff like that, that people would know and then there's a bunch of like you know movie characters and things like that so um but you know i just did one of the lucy bakes um uh classes as well the painting with charcoal so that was really nice kind mm -hmm. of painting in monochrome you know and being able to really focus on highlight and shadow and making the depth in in a what in a single color that was a really nice challenge as well um but like literally every time i'm just like oh i love it <laughs> like, i just want to do this <laughs> just this <laughs> So are you a fan of um, a lot of the cookies I've talked to like to listen to podcasts when they decorate? Is that something you do or are you more of a Netflix person when you decorate or, or nothing? Sometimes I'm, I'm music and I just like listen to the music and just put it on my like smart speaker thing and just kind of zone out. Um, I'm usually doing it like late at night so I don't have any like ear pods or anything so I can't put things in um, and just you know do my own thing and I'm, I'm you know the kid is trying to sleep and my husband's doing going to sleep or doing his own thing whatever so a lot of the time I'll put on something on like well it depends if I'm using something as a um you know as my projector image or just a reference image um but if I have uh, it available I'll use my iPad and just put on something that I don't have to think about so mm -hmm. it used to be like the office but they took that off Netflix now, which is unfortunate, but um, I think something that I've watched a hundred times over. So it will be Parks and Rec or it will be Schitt's Creek or something like that, where it's just like something that I just know back to front that it doesn't matter if it's just the audio. I don't feel like I need to watch it. Um, yeah. I just like a background noise of some kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find with me as well, I need that distraction to focus, which it right. doesn't make, doesn't sound like it makes sense. Right. Yeah. But I feel like, if my brain isn't 100% focused, I'm much better. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Otherwise, I need I'm just that. Yeah. Making, making mistakes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's true. So um, I'll ask you a couple of quick fire questions then, because I, I tend to do that every week as well. Yeah. So when you're, so you've answered one already. I was going to ask you, are you a daytime or a nighttime? And you, you prefer to decorate in the evening? Well, if anybody um, saw like my last a couple of posts ago it was like my back to school stuff and that's what happens mm. if I do it in the daytime is a small yeah. <laughs> human gets into them like if that had been on a portrait cookie I, I don't know yeah it's not good you mean a long time out <laughs> yeah. but it would be my fault because I left it out in the daytime so yeah nighttime <laughs> are they are they taking quite a bit of an interest in the decorating now then yeah. do you find they see yeah. you doing it I mean the youngest well? one he's only like 18 months so he just wants to take one single bite out of every single cookie apparently but the other two <laughs> whatever I'm doing it they want to do it with me um my oldest she's um when I first started I was doing um some of the bake you happy uh classes you know um how to cake it um and she would do them with me so there would be a live class and she'd be like trying to keep up <laughs> so but she always wants to do it with me 
Um, and she was really excited because we were going to give those cookies to her teacher. She was like, oh, can I write the Oopsie Daisy? Can I do this? And, um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's really cool to see her like, be interested in in that. Um, and she thinks it's cool and not dorky. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a nice skill for a kid, a kid to have their parents do because they can say, oh, yeah, my mum made this. And <laughs> I, it's, it's so nice because they, they – you know, they, they know they appreciate what you're doing as well then. And, and my kids, especially my youngest, he's five. He mm-hmm. keeps telling us all the time when we're out and he sees a building that's being constructed, oh, that's going to be my bakery, he says. Oh, that's <laughs> so <awesome>. he's so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> but he's kind of past the stage now of wanting to help. He just wants to eat everything. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. For a few years, he would want to help and do the rolling and mm-hmm. help with the mixing and He's gone past that now. Okay, so um, cake or cookies? Oh. To make or, yeah, to make, let's say, to, to make. make. Which do you prefer to make? Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's how simple you're talking. <laughs> if it's like, I mean, if it's just for me and I'm just doing something fun, a cookie, because then I'll just paint it and have something fun to to challenge myself and and to keep um and if it goes wrong then we eat it <laughs> they always <laughs> think I should. Uh, my, my kids call them test try i don't know why yeah. they that. they're like is that a test try cookie <laughs> like, <can I> eat <laughs> yes. so then they get to play and decorate their own and then they get to eat it um but yeah probably probably cookie although i do find you know cupcakes a lot more simple of a process you know it's just boom boom and it's done um <laughs> so this is a lot more waiting for the the flood to dry and all that stuff but uh gratification wise cookies yeah. what's your favorite icing to work with buttercream or royal icing or fondant i guess we could throw into the mix too i do like to make my own fondant i do like the marshmallow fondant i like how it mm-hmm. how it behaves and i actually started mixing it a little bit when i'm if I'm sculpting something with uh, modeling chocolate and it just prevents mm-hmm. it from like cracking if it gets dry or anything. And I really like that. Um, royal icing can be really picky, like finicky, especially with yes. the humidity here. So yeah. I guess in theory, I do like a nice Swiss meringue or Italian meringue buttercream. I like the texture of it. Um, I think it's kind of harder to get wrong. Um, mm-hmm. at least butter, regular American buttercream is definitely harder to get wrong <laughs> than any kind yeah. of real icing um, just because you you know one one extra drop of water one extra spritz and it and it's a completely different different texture mm-hmm. which is crazy to think of but um, yeah I think they all have their merits yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's that's one of the things I've always found the most frustrating is we have a lot of humidity here as mm-hmm. well in the summers yeah. so in the winter I can make everything as I normally would and it works out perfectly in the summer there's always that tweaking that I have to do for the humidity um and for me I think if I had to choose those one of those three I would say fondant yeah I think that's that's what I started with I like the the cleanliness of it and I like the modeling side of it I really like sitting down with fondant and making something with it Mm -hmm. which I Royal icing, you can do it to an extent, but I yeah. think there's much more you can do mm-hmm. with fondant that you can't do with it. But uh, yeah, I agree. yeah, it's it's. I think maybe it's also more from my background because that's mm-hmm. what I learned first, and then buttercream was much more popular for icing cupcakes in the UK. Mm-hmm. Royal icing was always just used for the fancy decorations on top of cakes or icing cakes for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I never iced a cookie with royal icing when I lived in the UK. I don't think I ever iced a cookie at all. (laughs) I was thinking even about cupcakes and I was like, I don't think I, I had to think about it. And I don't think I ever had a cupcake until I moved to North America, like a proper cupcake. Because I think we just had fairy cakes, which just has basically, you know, a, a cheats royal icing, which is just icing sugar and water or lemon juice. Yeah. And then you drizzle it over it or you maybe make it into a little fairy cake with the with the, you know, chop the top off. But I Yeah, the butterfly ever, cake. Yeah. I don't think I ever had like a proper cupcake no. with buttercream on it. Because, I mean, like you said, um on your on your last chat, you know, some 
something maybe have changed since you know we've we've moved away but it wasn't ever really a thing i don't i don't remember ever, ever it being a thing even in the supermarket no. you know, for birthdays or anything i don't think it was i think cake it's always been cake hasn't it in the uk yeah. and it still seems to be predominantly and then mm -hmm. i've noticed in a lot of the cookie groups that there are more british cookies evolving now but mm -hmm. it's it's not where it is over here. It's yeah. it's completely different. It's still cakes over there. So yeah. I th I think that's why if I had to put them in order, royal icing would be third for me. Yeah. Just because that's that's the uh, the one I've done. I've done the least over the Literally. years, I suppose. So, yeah. Yeah. More recently now here because mm -hmm. that's where the trends are. But right. You know, never never used it. I I the first thing I ever did with royal icing was ice a fruit cake for Christmas. Yeah. Have you, have you ever done that? Did you ever? I don't even know. No, because I never liked. I never liked it because because I'm not a marzipan fan. Uh, mm. The rest of my family is, but I can't stand it. But I would help my mum with the, with the Christmas cake. But I don't remember there ever being any royal icing in it. Mm. She would she would put you know ma, uh, marzipan and then fondant and then yeah and that was it. I think. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? How things yeah. are so different. So. <laughs> Um, and then colour schemes. So do you prefer uh, pastel colours or bright colours when you're decorating? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking around and everything's kind of muted. So probably pastel. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how we seem to get into a, a, a box without realising sometimes yeah. too. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm, I, I mean, I'm definitely, not, I'm still working on, you know, how to do photos of, of uh, pictures and stuff and obviously with Instagram having changed doing trying to do a few more videos even if it's just me videoing a finished cookie um, but I just you know if you scroll down my feed you know how some some cookies you scroll down and it's just like it's very uniform you know it's got a white background mm -hmm. and all the cookies are there and they look beautiful and but you know they're all just very um, kind of on brand that makes sense i feel mm -hmm. like i'm all over the place i'm like i don't know you know if some kid was tugging on my leg this is the picture you get today like it just <laughs> it's like not like a, a, a style i guess so obviously you know with my my preferences it's painting and stuff so a lot of it would be kind of muted in terms of like skin tone and things like that but um mm -hmm. but obviously it depends on who's ordering um and what they what they want but um just True. in terms of you know risk of color bleed or anything like that, I prefer the the ones that I like together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, color. that that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Color bleed is definitely more of an issue with the the darker, deeper colors. So, mm -hmm. and, and maybe that is why a lot of cookies have gone more to those muted pastel colors because yeah. it just doesn't tend to happen as much. Right. So it doesn't have as much what, color in it. Yeah. What's your um? What's the one tool that you always reach for when you're decorating? Hmm. What, or what do you have the most of? Uh, at this point, paintbrushes. I <laughs> have <laughs> <laughs> a lot of paintbrushes. Um, and there's always one. I mean, I got, I took a video of, of one of my finished ones and I had all my, like, it was just like, I just finished and put the paintbrush down and I kind of did this look sweepy kind of video of it and I noticed that the paintbrush that I that I love and I use the most and this is exactly the same with my my makeup uh, brushes too because I'm, I'm still qualified and I still work as a makeup artist as well so I do the same thing with my makeup stuff I reach for the same ones over and over and over and the the paint has like worn off the handle of it and it looks kind of <laughs> like junky but that one it's basically like one bristle left but that's what I want <laughs> it's like so there's definitely one brush that is my my favorite um mm -hmm. but yeah that's probably it yeah, yeah it's scribe. like me with my scribe, my scribe tools right. I've always used the PME one which is is sold as a modeling tool but it, it's a scribe tool yeah. and I went for a period where I was reorganizing all of my supplies and couldn't find it and I had others, and I don't know, it just wasn't the same. <laughs> I get so much anxiety thinking, where's my scribe tool? <laughs> Mentally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I lose mine and I don't have to use a toothpick, it's, yeah, it changes my whole 
So you can mm-hmm. kind of feel like it got through the toothpick away and then I used several and it's, yeah, it's just not the same. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how we get so attached to certain things, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. mm-hmm. so what's the biggest challenge that you found? And um, you, you say you take orders currently? Mm-hmm. Not many. What's the biggest? Some. Yeah, so how do you balance that with family life as well? On very little sleep. <laughs> I mean, I literally have like five different jobs. I I work in the gym. That's uh, my like, and I I do that uh, most of the time. I do that early mornings. So I try and get back before anybody's really awake, because people like to work out very early. Um, so that kind of you know gets me some some money coming in before everybody else's day kind of starts, and I'm like in mum mode. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I get it, get things in like right now, you know, my, my middle kid is, she's playing a video game. I was like, okay, you can play a video game while I do this. My husband's working downstairs from home. My youngest is taking a nap. So it really is just kind of finding those moments, um, to get things done. Yesterday, uh, I, I baked some, or I didn't bake, I, um, got together some dough for, um, an order that I have for Friday. So that's in the freezer right now, ready for me to do my cutouts when I'm ready. Um, and then I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll pre-mix my, my icing when I kind of get a minute, um, just so that I can get myself ready to decorate at nighttime and just have everything ready. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's not, it's definitely not a one step. Let's, let's make some cookies. It's, it's definitely a few days of, of juggling. Um, because there's just, there's a lot of different things to pick, to do, you know, gotta take, take the, the oldest to the bus stop and then pick her up. And then once my middle starts preschool, then, you know, we take her to school, I have to drive her and then pick her up. And then it's just, you know, the juggle that my mom warned me about. <laughs> she said, just wait, you'll think when they're in school, you'll be free, but no, then you're just a driver. <laughs> yeah. And, and you'll find other things to do as well. That's what I find. I, I keep saying I'm, I'm excited for them to start school next week, but I know that just means there's a whole other thing that I'll find to do. To do yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then there's the house project and, you know, all of the mm-hmm. cleaning and all that stuff you got to get done. So like any, any so, cookie who was a parent, you know, you, you have to juggle. Yeah, I think we all get very good at it very quickly and, and mm-hmm. good at our time management as well. So do you um, set limits for the amount of orders that you take so that you don't overstretch yourself? Um, my, yeah, I mean, I don't sometimes just, just some weekends, you know, like like when I have like a wedding booked or something for for makeup. Um, some some dates just become one of those dates where everybody wants something. Um, and I definitely mm-hmm. have have you know declined orders um when i've had too much going on um or when it's too short notice too you know i've had a couple orders recently where they've been within you know three days of asking and i'm like Mm. you know it's hardly even possible for the icing to dry in that time i'm sorry (laughs) i think people just don't realize and i and i I think we need maybe need more of that behind the scenes you know with a with a clock in the background or you know clock with the date on it that just says look this is how long it takes to get something Mm -hmm. done um you know this is not most people's full-time job they don't have childcare necessarily you know to be able to to say okay this is my eight hour window for baking today people don't don't typically have that um so i've been better but i'm definitely a yes person i have a really hard time saying no (laughs) um Mm -hmm. but you know i i try and make people happy i'm a people pleaser but i do have to you know set limits you might my husband's very good at pushing me to do that it's like do you need to do that I said, no. He said, okay say no it's okay to say no <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah and i think again that's where the the cookie shows are some in some ways responsible for that last minute um expectation from customers because they see things come together so quickly right and then as a cookier, do you t- do you explain why you can't, or do you just say no? I mean, it's it's tricky, mm-hmm. and a lot of people struggle with saying no. But mm-hmm. if it's at the detriment of you of your quality of work and your family life, something has to give. It's exactly. it's uneasy, but something has mm-hmm. to give. I think. Yeah, I definitely have said to people sometimes, you know, if it is very short notice, a couple of days or the next day or something like that, 
I'm like, but this isn't this isn't a batch of chocolate chip cookies. This isn't something I can bake now and you can have mm. it tomorrow morning. Like it's like physically not possible in this weather, yeah. even with a dehydrator, for those cookies to be dried enough that I can bag them and get them to you. It's just not gonna happen. And I'm sorry, but um, I read. What did somebody else say? Someone someone else's urgency is not. I don't know the phrase, but basically, it doesn't rest on you. Yeah. You know, you don't That's have to right. do it. You don't have to do it and stress mm -hmm. yourself out and then it go wrong and then you waste ingredients and feel like you've got to refund them or whatever it is. It's just not worth it in the end of someone. In the end, it's a cookie, right? Like mm -hmm. if you needed it that badly, you probably would have known about, you know, it needed to be done before two days before. <laughs> so that's, that's anyway. true. No, that, that is true. And it, it's, um, it's something that a lot of people talk about, but it's, you feel responsible by saying no, but again, it's not your fault. They didn't come to you until two days before. Right, so right. And even if, just... it, you know, something happens with their original cookie or something like that, which I have had as well. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for them. That's, that sucks that that situation has come upon them. But ultimately, you know, it's not life or death. It's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, a birthday cake. It's a something. Cookie. You can buy a birthday cake. You can postpone it. You can, we're not, you know, it doesn't. Really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah there's certainly a lot of things i think um especially for home bakers that they struggle with sometimes is that whole saying no and just setting barriers for making sure that people don't leave things to the last minute especially with payments and pickups as well mm -hmm. how do you deal do you do pickups do you do deliveries how do you structure um, that side of business i did do some deliveries where they did um like a kind of pop up um paint your own cookies a couple of years ago um but i won't do that again honestly <laughs> i think i did it for you know like a dollar a delivery which was i didn't even really set you know a circle around my house just like oh well that's not that far okay it was like half an hour to one person's mm -hmm. house it's just not no so now i just have like uh my brother-in-law brought over a wine barrel that he he was moving and he was like what do i do with this so now it sits outside our front door and that's my little stoop to put things on and people will pick up there. Um, or a lot of my orders are coming from people who I know from work. So, you know, I might just take it to work with me and they'll just pick it up there. Um, but at this point, I don't, I don't even take, you know, an extra, an extra payment, an extra charge for, for delivery. I just don't even offer it, honestly. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, again, not my, not worth my, my stress level to drive in Northern Virginia mm -hmm. any more than I no. have to. <laughs> No, that's true. You mentioned a dehydrator. You use a dehydrator then, I, I assume. I with the do. Tea. I don't use it that much. Sometimes I'll use it just to, just to um, you know, kind of get a, a crust layer on it. But I also, I'm not, um, we have forced air. I don't know if you have the same, but, you know, obviously in the UK, we don't have AC <laughs> and we have radiators to heat the house. So here we have an HVAC system which blows hot or cold air depending on the time of year so this system just it feels like it kicks on all the time so this basically becomes the way my kitchen island is set up it's it's almost underneath a vent so it does when it when it switches on a lot of the time I have to turn it off because it's already crusting my flood before I'm done mm -hmm. and then if I try and move it into the dehydrator it gets the crack and then I just yeah. you know if I'm painting then that the paint will get into the crack and and then it will spread so yeah i don't use it as much as i as i used to um i do for like little minis i might decorate them or flood them on the tray and then just leave it in there and put the lid on um but not as much at this point it's like storage for all of my portrait pictures but i'm trying to you know get the the uh, epoxy resin to um to seal these so mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So um, one question I always ask everyone as well is, what is your favorite season to decorate for? Oh, I do like, and I, I heard you talking about this the other day, um, uh, the fall mm -hmm. season. I do like, um, the, I don't know, just like the start of like snuggling. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm excited to work on some like, you know, 
knitted kind of textures. Um, I got a class um, waiting for me that I haven't done yet from Timbo that's about, you know, these gorgeous pumpkins that he's got and, and mm -hmm. how to use an airbrush or not use your airbrush with it. Um, and um, I'm really excited about those because he's actually gone out, out of the traditional box of like oranges and browns and stuff like that. And he's kind of got yeah. his pumpkins like pink with like purple flowers and stuff. And they're absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, I have so many classes just lined up because I keep being like, oh, I gotta try that, I gotta try that. Um, but I do like this kind of season. I've got um, some of those to-go cup things that I got from Marshalls or something um, a couple of years ago. They've just been sitting there, so I'm gonna do some little dunking cookies mm -hmm. or something this year, um, just see if people like those. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's always, like like everybody has, right? You always have so many ideas and it's just like, okay, what am I actually gonna implement here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to nail down, isn't it? Especially as everyone starts to to post what they're doing, and you get even more ideas. So it's mm -hmm. it's really hard to nail it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, what advice would you have for somebody that is thinking of getting into home baking and selling cookies from home? Oh, I mean, I don't think that I'm the right person to ask about like selling and stuff like that because I'm not, you know, I'm not making it a super business at this point. I'm just like I'm my brain is in so many places that if I want to, yeah. you know, like really get into it, take it seriously, I need to, you know, let go of some things. Mentally, I'm not quite there yet. So <laughs> at some point maybe, but I think, I mean, just go for it. Just go for it. I mean, in the end, it's true for cookies, especially the ingredients are not expensive. Um, no. You know, when you find the right places to go, uh, we have um, Aldi and Little here, they have, you know, good quality butter that's, you know, a couple of dollars for a, a pound. Um, so you can really kind of just play with things and just, you know, I take some classes. There are a lot of affordable classes out there that you can do. Go, you know, I, I when I set up my my Instagram for the, the business, I only follow other bakers. I don't have, like, I don't follow any of my friends or anything. So my entire feed is just <laughs> baking stuff. So that's a really nice way you can or even just set, you know set up a different Instagram that's a different name or you know your name but with an underscore or whatever just so that you can have somewhere where it's just focused on on what you like to follow whether it's cookies or whether it's cupcakes whatever it is you can see other people's inspiration and I think that really helps just to kind of scroll through and see what other people are doing and be like oh okay I gotta get on my pumpkin spice stuff already <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram is a great resource I find because you can either follow a lot of people or just search for the hashtags too and yeah. you'll find so much stuff it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like the new rabbit hole that YouTube was of, yeah. of videos you'd watch Pretty one and four yeah. hours later you're still <laughs> you're watching dancing cat videos it's just yeah <laughs> crazy yeah it's five hours later yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what's what's next for you then with the, do you have any particular techniques that you're hoping to get ticked off your list? You mentioned the Timbo one, anything mm -hmm. else that you got coming up? Yeah, I like his, he's got such great realism and, and sculpting mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So I really like, I would like to, you know, do a couple of his classes, maybe even with the cakes. He has like this one hamburger cake that is just mm -hmm. ridiculous and you're like okay or the, like he has one that's a giant fish and it literally looks like a giant fish i mean i think something like that where it's a little bit more sculpting based cake stuff rather than just like a cake with a drip or you know mm -hmm. something like that um i like something that's a little bit more of a of a challenge um so i mean but those are just kind of for fun because i don't know anybody who's going to order anything like that although i did have you know one um like workout uh, equipment cake that I did uh, not too long ago that was really fun um, but again I'm just like one of those people who just wants to kind of push myself but it's also that's why a lot of I do a lot of these just for myself because I like to try something new but I also don't want the pressure of having to do it for somebody else if it's a new technique mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want to have to you know practice like a cake um, that's going you know take so much time or, or money and then be left with a cake that yeah, I'm like, okay, I nailed it, but now I've got this cake. Over there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, well, this was great. Any any other last comments that your tips that you'd like to share with anyone before we wrap up? Ooh, I don't think so. I did just find um, uh, out about the Chua cookie 
mats that mm -hmm. we love. Yeah. So if anybody is like struggling with like uneven baking bottoms or if it's just not looking like nice and neat, I might have them here actually. Yeah, so this is one of like before I had the mats. So, I mean, it's baked, it's fine, and it's like a little bit round on the edges, but you get the, like the little kind of pockets of where it's been rolled out. And then this is one with the mat. So yeah, you can kind yeah, of see like, it's got this bit. really cool texture to it. It's really evenly mm -hmm. done. And uh, I just feel like it looks really nice. So. Did you find, it's interesting you mentioned those because they're, they're on my, my wish list of something to get next to try. Did you find it made a huge difference with spread or did you not have an issue with cookie spread? It did actually, see? yeah. It made a huge difference with spread. And I, I had adjusted my recipe a little bit anyway, so it was better. Um, but sometimes, especially with the square ones, so I feel like, I don't know if there's anybody else, maybe it's just me, but I feel like square or rectangular, uh, just spread it, like just the edges, they don't even spread necessarily, they just kind of go like this. Like, kind of brown. <laughs> so as yeah. soon as it comes out the oven, I'll get like a spatula and just kind of straighten it up and it's perfect. Um, but um, it definitely, definitely helped with that. And I used um, the Websterant store um trays as well so i have them specifically i mean i had light trays that i used for my cookies anyway rather than dark um but i got this specific um the right size to fit the mats and that's they're only mm -hmm. for cookies i don't do anything else on them i had tried other mats before just like the rather regular kind of silk pat ones but i never they never worked for me i don't know mm -hmm. I, maybe it's the chua ones have like little holes in them so it's almost like perforated and I just feel like that just lets the heat come in in a different way that just really really helps so they're really affordable and I that was a game changer for me for sure yeah a lot of a lot of cookies say the same thing that it just is that air that can flow a lot better mm -hmm. especially if you use a better quality baking pan as well yeah um it, I've tried a few different uh, of the silicone type and I've always ended up going back to parchment paper. Right. So, yeah. No. yeah, and that's what I was at before, but I felt like I was, even if I reused it, I felt like I was wasting so much, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially yes. if I'm making, you know, four dozen or something like I just felt like I was using it over and over. Um, and if you reuse it, it, it doesn't really, it's already kind of oily yeah. from the last ones. So it just doesn't work the same way, I don't think. But these mats are just fantastic, so big recommendation for them for me <laughs> do you find that you have to bake slightly longer because it's on silicone as well no no bakes the same yeah just the same but then it comes out even and it's not there's no like hot spots on it um i don't even feel like the edges get darker um what's this one yeah that one i i had a bunch of um the portrait cookie like bases like in the freezer just ready to go but um mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I do for myself. I just, when I have like extra, extra dough from uh, whatever order I've done, I'll just cut out a bunch of portrait size cookies and then just freeze them. So whenever I feel the bug to, to paint somebody or something, then I'll just grab one, flood it and do it the next day. <laughs> so, um, something I should ask you then, uh, for those that maybe are going to watch the replay, is what's your preferred um, colouring that you use for your painting? So right now I have the Americolor um, brand. Um, I just, I think I have their basic collection or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, color matching is something that I really enjoy doing. So I think it has 12 colors in it or something like that. And I just, um, I just mix them to whatever I need. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, obviously a lot of the ones I have right in front of me are pretty muted, but I did one of a gremlin the other day and that was using the same regular like greens and and stuff that's in there i think it was leaf green and i used added some yellow and some white and whatever so it looks kind of neon but it's not from any particular um set i don't have a huge collection of, of coloring but um that's what i use i had started to use um alcohol i had tried to use alcohol with it um but i just i find honestly personally i find it easier to paint with water so i just mm -hmm have a little pot of water and I just dilute it with that um and I, I can with the with the charcoal it's, it's nice to be able to kind of blend it down for a little bit longer um sometimes on the white especially the maracala can kind of get a little blobby when you mm -hmm. when you try to kind of remix it several times um yeah but I haven't tried any different brands at this point because these are working for me so 
Yeah, and that's the thing I think um, this has come up quite a lot as well is, is new cookiers feel that they have to go out and buy everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't need every color under the sun. You don't need 15 different shades of green. You can, yeah. if you learn to color blend, Exactly. then you really need very, very few colors. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes it easier for you when you are doing painting and, and different shades then because you've, you're just building up that knowledge rather mm -hmm. than picking up another pot of color. So, exactly, yeah. And yeah. I was speaking the other day with Ash about the color wheel and it's the same thing. I mean, and that, that's probably something, you know, from the various different kinds of art schools that I've been to, you know, where mm -hmm. I've learned those kind of like, you know, color theory um things um but definitely just kind of and i think less is more just play with it and and you don't need to go and buy everything because i know trust me i know like i have a whole section of the kitchen that's waiting for like a specific cupboard for all of my stuff um but at the same time most of it is, most of the the big stuff is cookie cutters um although i did just buy a laminating machine um, the, a very inexpensive mm -hmm. laminating sp machine just so that I can, if I have, a, you know, a, spe a specific um, something in an order that I don't want to buy a cookie cutter for because, you know, what am I going to use it again? I'll just draw yeah. it out. Like maybe I'll project it or print it out and then cut that and then laminate it. So then I can just put that onto the dough and then cut it out with a knife. It's not going to get soggy um, and I can still keep it in case of something else. But um it's, yeah. That's another thing to really be careful of because you can really dive down the black hole of just buying so many cutters. Yeah, and especially if you're selling, um, because then if you're buying a cutter for an order, that's obviously your profit is is being yeah. reduced every time. So yeah. the laminator idea is really smart. Nobody else has mentioned that they do that. So so hats off to you for doing that. That's a really good <laughs> and a, and in. Um, a lot of the how to cake it classes they give you templates and in the mm -hmm. cookies yeah you get templates too so mm -hmm. even though i have a 3d printer i'll mm -hmm. still quite often just make a template because i know mm -hmm. it's a once and done cookie so yeah exactly it's it's yeah. a it's a much much cheaper way of doing it mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this was great. I hope it's been okay for you. I know you were nervous yeah. because it was your first time. So. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. I'm just not looking at my face. I'm like separating. <laughs> just looking at you. It's fine. <laughs> it's nice to, nice to hear a similar accent as well because we're, yeah. we're from a very similar area. So. Yeah. yeah, just down the road. Um, that's crazy, isn't it? How yeah. even though we've all ended up in different places that we're mm -hmm. from almost the same place so yeah thank you very much for joining me yeah, today it's been really me. nice to chat with you and yeah. nice to learn about a little bit more about your business and what you do as well sure. um so as far as the sweet rambling series this was the last one for summer so um the replay will go on once we're finished and then i'm going to take a couple of weeks off going live whilst our kids get into a routine and i can figure out what times work for me again mm -hmm. and then we will start a new series of Sweet Ramblings in the fall. Those ones are going to be a little bit more topic based. So watch that, watch the, watch my feed for more information on that. I know some people have reached out that want to come on and join me with them as well. So I'll be posting more details once we know what our kids' schedule is because <laughs> we don't think they really want to be on camera. So, uh, so yeah, and. Uh, that's it. So thanks Great. again for joining yeah. us today, Libby. I hope everyone's enjoyed it and has learned something as well. And I will see you in a few weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.